look to ourselves, that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresseth, and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God's speed. When the Most High led me to his begotten son a couple years ago, I was overwhelmed and amazed. As soon as the Most High revealed to me the identity of his true begotten son, everything started to align. I started to see the world in a new perspective. My hunger for the truth increased. For many years, I thought I knew the Son of Man. My pastor spent multiple years teaching that Jesus was our Savior and God. It wasn't until the Most High the Father led me to his true beloved Son, I found great peace and the emptiness I felt inside of me began to fill with great wisdom and understanding. When I met the Son of Man, my pastor said was our Savior and God in religion, I still felt empty. Despite my pastor telling me this is our God, a big part of me wanted to keep searching. When I decided to draw closer to the Father, the Most High, the Father, began to draw closer to me. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Just as the scriptures state, as I draw closer to the Father by seeking his face, the Father began to draw closer to me. The more time I spent in the presence of the Father, the more he revealed to me. I made up my mind over 15 years ago to seek the Father for myself. I didn't want to know the Father through someone else's personal relationship with the Father. I wanted to know the Father for myself. The more time I spent with the Father, the more He revealed truth to me. In the process of the Most High telling me about my roots, the Most High was removing the years of religious indoctrination and preparing me for my purpose. The more I searched the deep things of the Most High, I began to find truth everywhere. The Holy Spirit began to open my eyes to see what was hiding in plain sight. When the Father humbled me and I finally accepted the call, Open Diary was formed. Despite Open Diary being around for almost a decade, the Father didn't lead me to his true begotten son until three years ago. When the father felt that I was ready to handle this deep truth, he led me to his begotten son, just like the scripture said the father would do. No man can come to me except the father which hath sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Many of us learn through religion that accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior granted us salvation. We would be under the protection of the Son of God. If most of you are honest with yourself, most of you felt nothing when your church leaders led you to the Son of Man. Nothing changed for you. Most of you was like me. You continued to search because there was an emptiness inside of you and religion couldn't fulfill that emptiness. No matter how many sermons you heard of Jesus loving you and dying to save you, none of their doctrines and feel-good messages filled the void. Most of us was grateful for what Jesus did for us. However, the benefit of accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior worked for everyone else but us. Nothing turned around for us as a people. We were still bondmen and women in the beast system. The kind of fruits we were producing didn't reflect the promises Jesus made to those who accepted him as their Lord and Savior. Many of us was just doing, as the scripture said, following the traditions of men. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Our parents was following their parents. The trend of believing in the same faith as your parents led us to following man's traditions. When we began to follow man's traditions, we lost connection with the Most High, the Father, in the process. 
while following the traditions of the pagan Gentiles that rule over us in their religious institutions, the God of our fathers was removed and replaced with the God of this world in religion. It wasn't until the Most High the Father awakened his people from their deep sleep because our redemption is near, as well as some Israelites' personal quest to feel the emptiness they felt inside. The only reason you're starting to remember yourself, the Most High the Father is calling his people at this time. Wherefore I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, and with your children's children will I plead. The high-level workers of iniquity that disguised themselves as ministers of righteousness in religion did nothing to help us grow spiritually. Matter of fact, they used witchcraft and sorcery to keep us bound spiritually. Remember, religion is nothing but witchcraft and idolatry. Everything taught to us in religion is nothing but lies. The Gentiles who made a covenant with death, they indoctrinated the indigenous black people in paganism. The same falsehoods the workers of iniquity hide behind. Many Israelites and the indigenous black people hold these falsehoods as the heritage given to them by the God of Israel. The gospel of truth, the most high the father have sent into the world as a witness to all nations is exposing everything. Unfortunately, some Israelites are letting the Satans steal the good seed, the truth for new doctrine. There are many Israelites dismissing the truth for new doctrine. Israelites, the time have come for you to stop letting the Satans and the disciples of Satan steal the good seed the Father is planting in you. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received a seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that received a seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. But he that received seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Israelites, learn from the parable of the sower. The truth the Most High have sent into the world will reveal deep truth. Truth such as Michael being the word of God. Majority of you say you serve the Messiah. Listen to the instructions the Messiah gave to you in the scriptures. Don't let the Satans come to steal the deep truth the Father is sowing in you. Instead of you letting the Satans cause you to dismiss the truth for new doctrine, go back to the beginning. Go seek the Father for answers. Remember, it was through you searching for more because religion couldn't fulfill the void that led you to truth. If religion could satisfy your spiritual hunger, many of you would have never left the church. If you left the church, make sure to leave their doctrines of devils there also. Coming to the awakening with a mind that is still under control by the Satans will do more harm than good. That is why you have to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. If you want to be transformed, you have to let the Father renew your mind through the Holy Spirit that reveal truth and tell you the things to come. Some Israelites really need to ask the Father to teach you how to listen. Listening is a skill that many need to master. The Father said to cast down the wicked imaginations, the Satans inserted into your mind. If the Satans control your mind, they will control your every move. Israelites, that is why it's important for you to allow the Most High to renew your mind. Cast down all the wicked imaginations that rise against the truth of the Most High's words. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. 
The Israelites spent many generations going in circles due to their unbelief as well as their inability to use proper discernment. When the Most High the Father rescued his people from the land of Ham to bring them into the promised land, the journey to the promised land was 11 days. Due to the Israelites' rebellious ways, they stayed in the wilderness for 40 years going around in circles. The Israelites in that generation wanted to be delivered from their troubles. However, many Israelites threatened to go back into captivity because they couldn't understand what the father was doing. If the Israelites used proper discernment, they wouldn't act the way they did. None of the generations saved from the land of Mizraim inherited the promised land. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, how long shall I bear with this evil congregation, which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in mine ears, so will I do to you. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you according to your whole number, from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me. Doubtless, Ye shall not come into the land, concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. But your little ones, which he said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. Today, we have Israelites believing because they are in the awakening, they will be saved. Some Israelites cannot use proper discernment to differentiate the truth from the lies told to them in religion. The Israelites cried out to the father in the generation of the Exodus because the Hamites who enslaved them caused the Israelites to do hard labor. The Israelites prayed to the father for help. The father heard them. In the process of the Most High delivering his people, the Israelites forsake the father and provoke the father to anger. This is not what a people who love and serve their God would do. The Israelites have a history of being disloyal to their God. Moses had to interfere and mediate between the father and his people. If it wasn't for Moses praying, the Most High would have destroyed the Israelites he saved from the land of Mizraim. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down, for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf, and have worshipped it, and have sacrificed thereunto, and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them. And I will make of thee a great nation. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out, to slay them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. You heard for yourself in the scriptures how our ancestors quickly forgot the father in their oppression. They made an idol and began to worship the idol. The choices some Israelites make is unbelievable. This is a frequent behavior with the Israelites. If Israelites in this generation use discernment, the Most High would show them the similarities. Nothing have changed. The Israelites living in the generation when the Messiah was flesh had no discernment as well. The generation of Israelites alive when Mary gave birth to the Messiah was like our generation. The Israelites had no knowledge of who they were. Despite having the scriptures and knowing about the prophecy about the birth of the Messiah, the writings in that generation was altered. This is similar to what we're experiencing in this generation. The scriptures are altered and the heathens have assumed the indigenous black people's identity all over the world. Despite the most high raising prophets to help his people, the Israelites rejected those prophets, just like they're doing today. The Israelites allowed themselves to be deceived by the Israelites who lack wisdom and understanding. 
The Israelites in the generation when the Messiah was flesh made the mistake of rejecting the Messiah and his mother, giving the spirit of division the opportunity to destroy them. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said, Of a truth, this is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Shall Christ come out of Galilee? Hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem where David was? So there was a division among the people because of him. And some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. Then again, since some of the writings were altered, People could not ascertain how they were married and could not know who were their wives or daughters. They did not know their names or their kindred, nor the order of generations. Neither did they know that of the priesthood. And Jacob married Gadat, the daughter of Eliezer, who gave birth to Joseph, the betrothed of Mary. And Jehoiakim, the brother of Jacob, married Hannah, the daughter of Makkah. And she brought forth the pure virgin Mary, and of her was born Christ. The former scribes, however, could not find a good lineage for the virgin and her father or kindred. Wherefore did the Jews crucify Christ and taunt him and mock him and say to him, Show us the father of Mary, the virgin, and her people, and what is her genealogy? Therefore did they blaspheme her and Christ. Yet henceforth shall the mouth of those unbelieving Jews be closed. And they shall know that Mary is of the seed of David, the king, and of that the line of the patriarch Abraham. Moreover, the unbelieving Jews had no register to guide them aright. Neither did they know how the lines of kindred ran at first, and as much as the law and the prophets were three times burnt out from them. Unfortunately, not too many Israelites will ever know this truth because they allow themselves to be deceived by the disciples of Satan. They believe Satan's disciples every word when they tell them not to venture into these books. The workers of iniquity even advise them not to read the Old Testament, which is why they teach the Old Covenant is fulfilled. Israelites, there's too much truth out here to allow yourself to be deceived by the workers of iniquity in religion. If you truly return to the Father like most Israelites proclaim, then you would have come to the realization that everything taught to you in religion are lies. You wouldn't have nothing in common with the heathens. Because the Israelites are a stiff-necked people, they allow Satan to deceive them the exact same way in every generation. While the Most High was saving his people from captivity in the land of Mizraim, his people forsake him. They even threatened to return to bondage in Mizraim, as you heard in the scriptures. Could you imagine what this generation is doing? A generation of Israelites who refuse to humble themselves and allow the Holy Spirit to reveal truth to them and tell them the things to come. Albeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. If the heathens allow the indigenous black people to be equal with them in the beast system, as well as the opportunity to make money without oppression, some Israelites will never pray to have the most highest kingdom to come. They will indulge themselves in the abominations of the heathens. Look at Sean Combs. The workers of iniquity in high places allow him to become a billionaire in the beast system. Instead of uplifting his community, He became a cancer to his own community and his people. If the indigenous black people weren't oppressed, they would live among the heathens forever. The repeated behavior of our ancestors and Israelites in this generation forsaking the Most High is the proof needed that they only cry out to the Father because of the oppression, not because they want to be saved. Without the oppression, they would gladly serve idols and dwell among the heathens. That is why the scripture said you would know a person by their behavior. Wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. The repeated cycle of the Israelites forsaking the father in every generation revealed they liked their present circumstances. The scripture said only a remnant will return. I can only expect a few to understand the messages from this channel. The Israelites that is using new doctrine to dismiss the truth is the strong delusion at work. Restoring the truth is not new doctrine. Israelites, don't allow the Satan to cause you to reject knowledge 
for new doctrine. The scriptures warn us about rejecting knowledge and blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Blaspheming the Holy Spirit is an unforgivable sin. The scriptures inform us in the book of Hosea that the Most High will reject you for rejecting knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Today in the awakening, many Israelites are rejecting truth because they lack understanding. This is why I always encourage Israelites to go to the Father for confirmation. Allow the Father to explain everything to you. The deep things of the Most High are only found by the Holy Spirit, and only the Holy Spirit can explain the deep things of the Most High to you. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. I can show you countless scriptures supporting every truth you hear on this channel. If the Holy Spirit don't pierce your spirit to convict you, you will never understand. Confirmation from the Holy Spirit comes with an absolute assurance. When I first shared the truth about Michael being the Messiah, I made it known to all to go to the Father for yourself. I knew this is a hard truth for many to believe. I said to the Father, you have to give me a lot of evidence to show your people because they are not going to believe this. The Father led me to countless books that have the truth. Despite sharing the information, it wasn't enough for some Israelites. That is why I say, if you truly serve the Father, go to the Father just as I did. He will tell you the truth. If you truly serve the Father in the Spirit and in truth, you already know the truth. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Israelites, let us talk about the supposed new doctrine many Israelites are alerting others to beware about. Let's hear what the scripture said. In the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 3 said that if anyone teach a gospel that is contrary to what the Messiah teach, that person is conceited and understand nothing. In the book of Romans, chapter 16, verse 17 and 18, warn us to watch out for people who cause division and teach what is contrary to the teachings you have learned. The scripture said to keep such people away. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, now I beseech you, brethren, Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. You heard for yourself what the scripture said. If anyone teach what is contrary to what the Messiah taught, beware of them. Both the Messiah and I told the people of the Most High to return to the Father. While Rome have taught you that the Messiah is God the Father in the flesh. Israelites, have you ever thought in your mind that the doctrines taught to you from Rome are the new doctrines? The truth that is being spread across the world is exposing the new doctrines taught to you in religion. We've discussed and concluded that every doctrine taught to us by Rome are lies. Nothing taught to us in religion could be verified in the scriptures. Let's start with the Trinity and God in the flesh doctrine. These two doctrines are leading many Israelites astray. Rome told you the Godhead consists of three parts that's one entity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That is what Rome said. When you read the scriptures, there's no scriptures that support this belief. The Most High, the Father, said, there is none besides him. The Most High said in the second book of Enoch that he's the sole ruler. For I created all forces, and there is none that resisteth me or that does not subject himself to me. For all subject themselves to my monarchy and labor for my sole rule. 
The father is the sole ruler. The father appointed his creatures to operate his creation. The father said he would not share his glory with another. If the father won't share his glory with another, it would be difficult for him to be three in one, correct? Israelites, I will ask you again, can you serve two masters? The scripture said you can't serve two masters. Yet the Godhead consists of three gods. That's confusion, don't you think? In the Old Testament, it was the father only. Somehow in the New Testament, the father became three. There's a scripture in the book of Matthew that quoted the Messiah saying, all authority in heaven and on earth have been given to him. If all authority have been given to the Messiah, it's safe to say he didn't have all authority before, correct? If he didn't have authority prior, who did? In addition, there must be someone greater than him that gave him this authority, correct? And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. The person that gave the Messiah the authority must be the head, correct? How can the Messiah be the father in the flesh if someone greater than him gave him authority over the heaven and earth? The Messiah himself said, the father is greater than him. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice because I said I go unto the father. But my father is greater than I. If the Messiah is a father in the flesh, why did he say the father is greater than him? If we would just let the scriptures speak, the new doctrines taught to you by the Romans wouldn't destroy the people of the Most High for as long as it did. The Father said he was self-eternal, not made with hands. Being self-eternal means there was never a time the Most High the Father didn't exist. The scriptures let us know in the book of John that the word of God was with the Father from the very beginning. Since the Father is self-eternal and always existed, this would mean the Word of God was present in the beginning when the Father decided to create visible things from the invisible. The angels were already created when the Most High decided to make man in his image and likeness. I am self-eternal, not made with hands and without change. From the invisible, he made all things visible himself being invisible. If the Most High the Father was three in one, he wouldn't have a problem with his people serving multiple gods. For he himself have multiple versions of himself according to the doctrines from Rome. The Father chastised his people whenever they serve idols. We are in the land of our captivity due to our people's failure to serve the Most High. The Messiah in the scripture said repeatedly, he's not here to do his own will. He's here to do the will of the Father who sent him. If the Godhead consists of three parts, the way Rome interpret the scriptures, how come the Messiah wasn't honest with the people and let them know he was God the Father in the flesh when speaking to the people? Instead of saying he's God the Father, the Messiah always refer everyone back to the Father who sent him. When the Messiah began to teach, everyone was amazed at his teachings. His teachings had great authority. The Israelites in that generation was marveled at his wisdom, but that didn't stop some people of accusing the Messiah of having a devil. The Messiah knew the people was impressed with his wisdom and authority he possesses in his teachings. The Messiah explained to the people that his teachings are not his own, but of his father who sent him. And they were all amazed insomuch that they questioned among themselves saying, what thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits and they do obey him. Jesus answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. The Messiah informed everyone throughout the scriptures that he was doing the will of the father who sent him. That is how some people knew that he was the Messiah they were all waiting for. The Israelites in that generation was aware of the promised deliverer that was to come. When the Messiah asked his disciples, who do the people say that he was? Majority of the people believe he was a prophet or one of the prophets of old that was reincarnated. The only person who truly knew it was the Messiah was Peter. The reason Peter knew he was the Messiah, the father revealed it to him. And Simon Peter answered and said, 
thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Grace be with you, mercy and peace, from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. None of our ancestors alive when the Messiah was flesh believe he was God the Father in the flesh. Even Peter said he was the Son of God, not the Father in the flesh. Our ancestors was aware of a deliverer that was coming. The Messiah had a hard time convincing the people he was the Messiah. Could you imagine our rebellious ancestors believing the Messiah is God the Father, the creator in the flesh? If the Messiah was God the Father in the flesh, the Most High shouldn't be angry with his people for serving multiple gods. We all know the Father don't want his people to put any other God before him. That is the first commandment. Israelites, the time have come for you to know that the God title shouldn't be given to the Most High, the Father. The God title is reserved for the angels who are the sons of God. Another word for the sons of God are Elohim. The angels are gods, but they are lesser gods. That is why the heathens worship and serve the fallen angels as gods. All of the gods of the Gentiles are idols. Every sacrifice the Gentiles make, they make to idols. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. The Most High, the Father, is greater than the title God. The Father is greater than the sons of God. The time have come for you to differentiate the Creator from His creation. The Messiah never said He was the Father. The Messiah never taught the people that He was the Father. Rome teaching the Messiah is God the Father in the flesh is new doctrine. Telling the people of the Most High that the laws are done away with is new doctrine. The Messiah said he didn't come to abolish the laws, but to fulfill. Everything written about him in the laws of Moses and in the Psalms and in the prophets concerning him. Rome spent countless generations telling the world that the laws of the Most High is done away with. How come you don't accuse Rome of spreading new doctrine? Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. The scripture said, anyone who teach what is contrary to what the Messiah taught is teaching new doctrine. The truth that is spreading in all nations is not teaching anything new, but exposing the new doctrines taught to you in religion. Telling the people that the old covenant is fulfilled and we're under a new covenant is new doctrine. An everlasting covenant can be fulfilled. An everlasting covenant is forever. Everlasting doesn't have an expiration date. Since when did the Father making an everlasting covenant to be a God to his people have a time limit? And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Teaching that the Gentiles have replaced the Israelites as spiritual Israel is new doctrine. The Messiah said he was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. If he sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, how did the Gentiles replace the Israelites? The father sent the Messiah to the lost sheep. After the Messiah trained his disciples, he gave his disciples strict instructions. The Messiah said, go not to the Gentiles. The Messiah sent his disciples to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. These twelve Jesus set forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. How did the Gentiles replace the Israelites as spiritual Israel? The Most High never replaced his people with the Gentiles. Even Paul, who was sent to the Gentiles, said the Most High didn't forsake his people. Rome teaching the replacement doctrine is new doctrine. Teaching the people that they have to be grafted in when the Gentiles always had an opportunity to serve the God of Israel is new doctrine. Israelites, 
when the scriptures warn us about new doctrine, the doctrines from Rome and countless other doctrines that are contrary to the teachings of the Messiah is the new doctrine the scriptures warn us about. How come you're not outraged? Most of you who deny the truth are not afraid to attack your own people. Yet the Romans who deceive you with their doctrines of devils, you don't accuse them of spreading new doctrine. Is it because you've been hearing their doctrines for multiple generations? The Romans have successfully deceived many people with their false doctrines. I've compared Rome's doctrines with what the Messiah taught in the scriptures. None of their doctrines correspond with the teachings of the Messiah. How come none of you accuse Rome of teaching new doctrine? The reason you're not, the scripture said in the end times, you won't listen to sound doctrine, but you will have itching ears and many of you will turn away from the truth. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. The gospel of truth that is spreading throughout the world is undoing the lies the workers of iniquity unleash into the world through doctrines of devils in religion. Many Israelites in this generation are dismissing the truth for new doctrine. Israelites, don't let the Satans deceive you. Use discernment. A great majority of Israelites expected the gospel of truth to support the doctrines of devils from religion, especially the doctrine of the Messiah being God the Father in the flesh. The scripture said the heathens made a covenant with death. They take refuge in their lies and hide behind their falsehoods. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death and with hell are we at agreement when the overflowing scourge shall pass through it shall not come unto us for we have made lies our refuge and under falsehood have we hid ourselves did you honestly believe the gospel of the kingdom was going to support the lies and falsehoods told to you by the high level workers of iniquity that serve the satans in religion as well as in the beast culture they've lied about everything do you honestly believe the truth was going to support the God in the flesh doctrine as well as the Trinity doctrine? Israelites, open your eyes. The people the Most High have raised in this generation to be the forerunner in the awakening is not the enemy. That is why discernment is important. The Israelites have a history of stoning the prophets the Most High sent to help you. The time have come for you to stop letting history repeat itself. We have to be the generation that rise above the lies and deception from the kingdom of darkness. The earth was given into the hands of the wicked. The wicked will never serve the father in the spirit and in truth. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. It covers the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Broad is the way that leads to destruction and many are on that road. Israelites, the people that rule over you in the beast culture, the Gentiles that are in leadership position in all the religious institutions, as well as the Israelites that was trained by the Gentiles don't serve the God of Israel. They serve the God of this world. They made it known that Jesus is their God and they follow Jesus. The scriptures told you in the book of Psalms that the gods of the Gentiles are all idols. What do you have in common with them? If the Gentiles truly serve the God of Israel, the earth wouldn't be in the hands of the wicked. Many Israelites are struggling to understand the truth because some Israelites can't understand the truth as well as to some Israelites, the father is not moving the way they like. They are rejecting the truth. Israelites, the feel good doctrines from religion didn't satisfy the emptiness you felt. Why do you continue in the heathen's abominations? The only thing that can satisfy you and fill the void is the truth of the Most High's words that was sent into the world as a witness to all nations. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Israelites, don't mistake the truth the Most High is pouring out into the world for new doctrine. 
It's actually old doctrine that had been buried by the lies and falsehoods of the heathens. The call on my life to help the father prepare the remnant that truly serve him to meet the true Messiah hasn't been an easy job. I've never imagined the people who say they are awakened and serve the God of Israel would be so diabolical towards their own redeemer and their creator. The history of the Israelites rejecting the father and the Messiah should have prepared me for this harsh truth. There are some Israelites dismissing the truth of Michael being the word of God for new doctrine. The belief of Michael being the Messiah is not new doctrine. This belief has been around for some time. The belief of Michael being the Messiah is not popular because the Messiah that came in his own name have stolen the hearts and minds of many in the beast system. Jesus is the most beloved God in this world. The belief of Michael being the Messiah is unheard of for some people, while a few already knew this truth. The belief of Michael being the Messiah is accepted by a small minority few, which corresponds with the scripture saying, narrow is the way that leads to life. Only a few will find that road. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. Israelites, the truth I have shared with you on this channel corresponds with the teachings the Messiah taught our ancestors when he was flesh. The Messiah was gathering the lost sheep to bring them back to the Father. I have been pointing our people to the Most High, the Father, and encouraging the people of the Most High to establish a personal relationship with the Father for almost 10 years. No Israelite should be confusing me telling you to return to the Father for new doctrine. I'm only repeating what the Messiah said to our people. The Most High have been pleading with his people for a long time to return to him. It's our generation's turn to hear the call from the Father to return to him. Israelites, if you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you into all truth, the Holy Spirit will help remove the scales from your eyes to allow you to see what is hiding in plain sight. Israelites, it's important that you listen carefully to the instructions of the Father at this time. Don't be quick to reject the truth. The Most High will put the strong delusion on you for rejecting the truth. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Because of the strong delusion, many Israelites who believed they were following the Messiah back to the Father were here, depart from me, I never knew you. At that time, many of you who reject the truth would say, Lord, I did this in your name and that in your name. The Messiah will say, I never knew you. The truth is, many of you don't know the Father. You know the God of this world. Only a few Israelites know the Messiah that came in the Father's name. The rest followed the Messiah that came in his own name. The awakening is giving the Israelites the opportunity to get to know the father so he can lead you to his only begotten son. The Messiah many of you were led to accept as your Lord and Savior in religion was a counterfeit. Many of you were taught to serve the God of this world. The time have come for you to know the God of your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If you seek him, you will find him. He's closer than you know. That they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Israelites, the time have come for you to use discernment. The Israelites in the generation when the Messiah walked the earth rejected the Messiah because they couldn't verify Mary's bloodline. The Israelites was convinced that the Messiah wasn't who he say that he was. Our ancestors rejected him and said, let his blood be upon them and their children. After they handed their beloved savior to be killed, the Israelites realized they made a mistake. And when the centurion, which stood over against him, saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, truly, this man was the son of God. How many times will you reject the truth just for the Most High to show you that you made a mistake? I bet the generation of Israelites that complained the entire time the Father delivered them from the land of Mizraim regretted their decision of forsaking the Father and provoking him to anger. 
On multiple occasions, the Most High showed the Israelites their error in rejecting truth. The awakening is giving the Israelites in this generation the opportunity to change this destructive cycle. You don't want to wait until Judgment Day to believe the Most High. By then, it will be too late. The truth the Most High is making available is not new doctrine. The truth is exposing the lies told for centuries. Israelites, don't use new doctrine to dismiss the truth. Before you reject the truth, ask the Father for a double portion of the spirit of discernment. I have never been a person who follow what is popular in this world. The scripture said what is popular in this world is an abomination with the Most High. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts, for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. Israelites, don't mistake those of us who are set apart and seeking the face of the Father, as well as allowing the Most High to renew their mind for people who have fallen away from the truth of the Most High's words. When you're set apart, you're not following what's popular with the world. You're following the Messiah back to the Father. Israelites, don't let the deep truth separate you from the Most High. Give the Father the opportunity to disciple you through the people he is showing himself strong through. Not all feel-good messages are of the Most High. Not all messages that you believe is new doctrine are of the Satan's. Israelites, the time have come for us to rise above the Satan's deceptions. We must allow the Most High to guide us into all truth through the Holy Spirit. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises unto our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing ye praises with understanding. God reigneth over the heathen, God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto God, he is greatly exalted.